Ethiopia has a smaller share of its people who have access to electricity than most other African countries, and a much smaller share than most other countries around the world. About half of the people in Ethiopia are wired for electricity. In 2011, Ethiopia began building a dam on the Blue Nile. When it is finished in 2023, it will be the largest hydroelectric dam in Africa. The concrete structure will rise 145 meters or 475 feet and make a reservoir that will cover 1,874 square kilometers or 724 square miles of land, which is about the size of Houston, Texas. When you add up the height of the spillways and turbines, the whole project will be 145 meters tall. It'll be called the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, and it should help Ethiopia make more than twice as much energy as it does now. If everything goes as planned, GERD will bring in a new era and help lighten the mostly black terrain that can be seen in nighttime photos of Ethiopia. In the above image from the SUMO NPP satellite, Notice how dark Ethiopia is compared to the bright light trail along the Nile River in Egypt. According to data from the World Bank, everyone in Egypt has access to electricity. In addition to making electricity, the Great Ethiopian Renaissance Dam is expected to reduce the damage caused by seasonal floods in Sudan, increase food supplies in Ethiopia by making irrigation water more reliable, and make other dams further down the Nile last longer by collecting sediment. All of these benefits should happen in in addition to GERD's main job, which is to make electricity. But because the dam will change how the water flows in the river, it is possible that it will affect the millions of people who live and farm further downstream in Egypt and some parts of Sudan and use water from the Nile. The following photograph of the Great Bend of the Nile, which was taken in its natural color, shows how important the river is to the Egyptian people. Near the riverbanks, in a small area, you can find 95% of Egypt's land that can be used to grow crops. Over the past 10 years, GERD has been in the works, and it is almost done. The process of filling the reservoir started in 2020, and it's expected to take anywhere from a few years to 10 years. Depending on the weather and how much of the flow of the Blue Nile is held back by the dam managers, Ethiopia has a reason to fill up the reservoir quickly so it can start making electricity and start paying back the $5 billion investment. But because 60% of the water that flows into the Nile comes from the Blue Nile, filling it quickly could make a big difference in how much water flows downstream. Isam Hege, a scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory who recently co-wrote a study about the possible hydrological and economic effects of filling the dam at different rates, says the dam will definitely help with flood control and hydroelectric power, but there are important questions about how quickly the reservoir should be filled and how it will be managed in the long term. Even though the dam will help with flood control and hydroelectric power, there are still important questions that need to be answered. Heggie says, filling the reservoir too quickly in less than seven years could cause water shortages downstream that hurt food production. This is especially true if the reservoir is filled during a drought. His research shows that quickly filling the reservoir could cause big economic problems. However, he says that increasing groundwater extraction, changing how Egypt's Aswan High Dam works, and growing crops that need less water could help lessen some of the effects. His research shows that if the reservoir fills up quickly, it could cause big economic losses. Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan have not agreed on a plan for how the dam will be run or a timetable for when the reservoir will be full. In the meantime, scientists who work in remote sensing have been using satellites to keep an eye on what's going on at GERD. Satellites are one of the best ways to keep up with what's going on in the world because the information they gather is open source, uncensored, and available to everyone. Based on measurements made by satellites as of February 2022, a group of academics from the University of Virginia came to the conclusion that the GERD reservoir held less than 15% of its capacity. We can estimate the change in the amount of water in the reservoir. Prakrut Kansara, who helped write a study about their method that was published in Remote Sensing, said, This is done by combining radar data from the European Space Agency's Sentinel-1 satellite that can see through clouds with a digital elevation model of land from NASA, he said. Hesham El Askari, a professor of remote sensing and earth system sciences at Chapman University and one of the study's co-authors said, 
The reservoir was 23% full at the end of the rainy season in September 2021, but then water levels dropped due to evaporation and water releases. During the first two years, the rate of filling was about 11% per year. This means that at the current rate, it will take a little less than nine years to reach capacity. Using data from NASA's GRACE and GPM satellites and results from a NASA model called the Global Land Data Assimilation System, the team also looked at how precipitation, total runoff, and total water storage in the area changed with the season since 2002. A professor of engineering at the University of Virginia and one of the study's co-authors, Venkataraman Lakshmi, said, our research shows that El Nino and La Nina are linked to dry and wet periods in the Nile Basin. It's essential that we take into consideration these cycles and that they're incorporated into the planning process. Scientists, engineers, and diplomats must all be in the same room to talk about the best way to fill and run the reservoir. The third filling phase is expected to start in July 2022, and it'll be able to collect more water than the first two fills put together. During the first phase of filling, which took place in 2020, about 4.9 billion cubic meters of water were held back. During the second phase, another 6 billion cubic meters of water were added. Heggie said, if Ethiopia keeps adding water to the GERD over the next five years, the fourth and fifth fillings could reach 25 billion cubic meters. No matter how fast the space is being used, there will be a lot of change to watch from both the ground and the sky in the years to come. Heggie says, the Aswan High Dam and the GERD can store more than 280% of the Nile's annual flow when used together. Instead of being mostly affected by natural processes, the flow of the longest river in the world will be mostly affected by how two dams work. Physically, there's nothing stopping the Ethiopian dam from holding as much water as it wants and using it in any way it wants. On the other hand, farmers downstream don't like it when their precious water source suddenly runs out so that lights can stay on across the border. Egypt and Sudan both build hydroelectric dams that block some of the river flow, so it's in their best interest for the river to keep flowing and flow well. Talks between the two sides keep getting stuck and there doesn't seem to be an easy way out. In a recent paper published in Nature, researchers from Vries Universiteit Bruxelles and Ku Leuven suggest combining resources to help everyone as much as possible. During the rainy season, the river flows into the dam and fills it up. During the dry season, the river flows out of the dam. Flows are controlled so that power can be made all year long. The more water that's kept behind the dam, the more electricity can be made when it's released later. GERD is big enough to stop all the water's annual flow if that's what someone wanted to do. When you build a dam on a river, you change its natural flow. Instead of rain, the river's water level depends on how much water is allowed to flow out of the dam. During dry years, most of the water could be kept in the dam. This would cut the amount of water going to countries downriver by a lot. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more.